Um, but a lot of them are kind of asking, you know, um, what your experience was like with racism, like during your youth and as you moved into the professional field, um, what kind of radicalized you or changed you to motivate and make you the person you are. Um, and then when you first started with social justice issues, what was the first thing you tackled where you actually felt like you made an impact? Okay, um, fantastic. Uh, let's just start with myself. I was born in uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, my mother raised me as a single parent. Um, we eventually moved to the high desert uh, where I first we started at in Hesperia. I attended Maple Elementary School. Then I went over to Topaz. Um, after Topaz, then I went over to Hook Junior High. Um, and then from Hook, I went to Victor Valley High School. Uh, excuse me, I went from uh, Topaz to Del Rey Elementary School in Victorville. And then um, junior high at Hook Junior High and then high school at Victor Valley High School. And so I'm from the desert. Uh, I um, experienced racism in elementary school. In fact, I was jumped five times uh, as a youth, which is why I was moved uh, from LA. I was involved in the drive-by shooting, which is why my mom moved us up to Victorville. We were poor. Um, and so we are Hesperia. And so in Hesperia, I was jumped uh, several times um, by a couple of uh, white kids uh, twice and a couple of uh, Latino kids twice. Um, and so <clears throat> I experienced racism really, uh, relatively early. Um, I remember being called uh, the N-word several times. And in fact, my very first time ever being suspended from school was in the fifth grade. And this was the, I don't know how many times I had been called nigger. And the, the, the son of a proctor felt the need to call me it one day and I had enough. And I, as we say, beat the brakes off of him. Uh, I got in trouble, I was suspended. Um, I was suspended longer than he was. Um, <clears throat> but when I got home, uh, obviously there was no trouble. It was when my mom connected with me um, and basically instilled in me the idea that when you respond to people the way that they antagonize you, you make yourself no better than them. And so while I was right, according to what my mom's lessons were in defending myself, I ultimately suffered more than he did. And so I learned a valuable lesson that uh, physical violence is very rarely going to be the most appropriate response to racism or ignorance. Um, it didn't help me, and in fact, I think made it worse. So that was a bit of a lesson that I learned. I was uh, in the fifth grade when that occurred. Um, I experienced uh, discrimination um, as I went through college. I went to the University of Laverne. I was a, uh, a Black student. Uh, in a predominantly white school is, is predominantly Hispanic now. Um, but uh, very few people were black and poor at the university that I attended. So I caught issues from both uh, the black community and the non black community. I was the quintessential uh, representation of a black person. I was the stereotypical what when when people talk about the black man what the image that a lot of white people got in their heads was me right uh got in trouble ra uh, raised in poverty single mother um etc um and so that actually caused a lot of issues between me and the other black students on campus because i was considered more black than them because i was poor and so i had to deal with issues from both groups. Um, there's also another aspect of this that probably doesn't get talked too much, and that's fetishism. The fact that people actually uh, fetishize, uh, people are very much into uh, the different narratives that 
exist in the Black community. So, um, you know, making sure that you are dealing with the right people for the right reasons was always an issue that I had to face and look out for uh, as I was coming up in college. And so uh, this kind of links me to the, the issue that radicalized me, so to speak. Um, while in college, uh, and, and just for a little background, I was a deacon uh, in the church. I was ordained and licensed as a deacon at the age of 14 at a church in Victorville called Powerhouse Ministries. It no longer exists, um, but I was uh, heavily involved in the church. But when I went to college, uh, I stopped. And so I ended up actually getting in trouble in college where I was arrested, uh, went through the court system and was ultimately convicted of a crime. Basically, I worked at Target. I had a friend come in and I hooked him up uh, with uh, free stuff. Um, that, that is burglary. And so I was, or larceny, I was charged and convicted of burglary. And I sat in that jail cell thinking, I've... I've done what I know all of my colleagues to do. I, I've never even known anything to really be wrong with what I did. I let the guy go with a couple DVDs. Um, and so I didn't understand it. And I sat in jail for five days, went through the process, was treated like a criminal, even though I had never been in trouble before. And I, I sat in that cell and I realized this is either going to be a very good experience for me or a very bad experience for me. And I remember thinking that I'm either going to come out and be one of the most successful people uh, imaginable, or I'm going to be the biggest, baddest gangbanger there is, uh, because there, there doesn't seem to be a middle ground for me. Um, and so luckily, when I got out of college, or when I got out of jail, the people at my college, instead of turning their back on me or uh, making me feel bad or uh, shaming me, they really surrounded me with love and support. And they made sure that I had the support that I needed in order to successfully continue through college um, and then get into law school. And so uh, that experience showed me that um, if you don't have the right network and the right connections, this system will chew you up and spit you out. And it just so happens, my football coach, my mother was there as well, but my football coach, who was a white man, uh, literally refused, was almost uh, held in contempt and put in jail himself, refused to allow them to talk about me and treat me as any other Black man, right? He constantly made sure they were talking about my being a college student, the star athlete, on the honor roll, all the good things that I had to offer. He made sure that they kept that in mind. Um, and so having him fight for me, and then uh, really he offered his sister, who was a, a an attorney, um, and to, uh, to bail me out, he offered all these resources. I realized that there is a, a huge difference between what I experienced going through the system as a football player, as a college student under that protection, than what many other people experienced without those resources. Um, what would have happened if I didn't have him there to fight for me or argue for my release or offer to bail me out or these other things? Could have easily been sent down to a uh, county in, in Los Angeles. And the based on the personality I have and the type of person I was, I am fairly sure that if I have been sent down to county, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. And in fact, my football coach told me, do not let them send you down there. If I have to pay $100,000 to keep you from county, I would do it. Because he knew what, 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 is, what the system entails and what it does to people uh, who were in a position like I was in. And so having those resources and understanding how big the system is and how easy it is to chew people up and spit people out, that caused me to say, I can't do this. I cannot be a person that just goes through life, makes a lot of money, am successful myself, but not provide people the same resources that I was access that I was able to access to in my journey through the criminal justice system. So one of the first issues, social justice issues I tackled, and this was after I got my license, I started an expungement clinic. Um, and for five, the last five years that we started in 2015, 
I've done free uh, criminal record cleanup and expungements, and I've appeared in court for folks and have done as much as I can to help people uh, overcome some of the challenges that they are faced with after they go through and have an experience with the criminal justice system. And so um, I've, I've done uh, several hundred um, expungements where people have gotten their records cleaned up. Um, I've done uh, probably a couple hundred domestic violence restraining orders. I grew up in a household where domestic violence was an issue. Um, and so I've provided domestic violence representation to, uh, to a number of victims who didn't have a, a, the resources that they needed in order to get the legal protection that I feel they deserve. So I'd probably say those were the two first things that I tackled, uh, being uh, criminal record expungements and domestic violence restraining orders, uh, making sure that people got the protection that they need from uh, perpetrators living in their home that did or wished them harm. 